Hey, Shalom, Israel, Brother Reggie Jr. here. So today, guys, I'm going to be reading Exodus chapter 35, as well as Exodus chapter 36. Now, with these two chapters, I'm not going to be doing a whole lot of stopping just because both chapters are pretty much self-explanatory. Um, I know uh, for both chapters, uh, I'm going to have to read them all the way through just because it's dealing with the offerings for the building of the tabernacle. So it's not going to be anything that needs any sort of explaining. I know at the beginning here of this Exodus 35 for like the first four or five verses. Uh, Moses is just telling uh, Israel about the Sabbath day and how they don't need to be working, kindling no fire and doing none of that on them day on that day because it's a holy day. OK, but with that being said, guys, we're going to go ahead and get right into this thing. I ain't going to prolong it. Exodus 35, and we're going to start with verse 1, and it says, And Moses gathered all the congregation of the children of Israel and said unto them, These are the words which the Lord hath commanded. Because why the Lord would always pull Moses aside, and he would tell Moses the things that he wanted him to tell the children of Israel. So everything that he was telling the children of Israel was not his words. These were the words of the Lord. But unfortunately, you had a lot of carnal Israelites that didn't really believe in God. Okay, all they seen was Moses, but they didn't see the power that was behind Moses, the force that was behind Moses. Okay, so they didn't realize whenever they went against Moses in their carnality, they didn't realize they was going against the most high, the most high. And that ended up being these wicked Israelites downfall. But it says, these are the words which the Lord have commanded that ye should do them. Not because I said do it. No, but because the most high said do it. Verse two, six days shall work be done. OK, so Moses is briefing the children of Israel on this Sabbath day. Six days shall work be done. OK, now we're going to go ahead and go to Genesis chapter one. I got to drill this in y'all head about what a day is. OK, so the Lord says six days. You got to do everything that you need to do. OK, so Genesis chapter one and verse five. And it says, and God called the light day and the darkness he called light. So the uh, when you see that light out, that is what is considered the day, not the darkness. The darkness plus this light equals a day. No, that is a Babylonian doctrine. That is a science doctrine. That is not the word of God. According to the word, when you look outside and you see that light, that right there is a day. And out of the mouth of Jesus, the Messiah, the chosen one, he says that that day lasts 12 hours. OK. So you got six days with 12 hours in them to do everything you need to do, okay? Okay, you know, you work your crops, um, enjoy your pleasures, whatever you do. But what? On the seventh day, there shall be to you an holy day. So the Lord through Moses is like, look, on this Sabbath day, this seventh day, the last day of the week, it's not going to be like these other six days or these six lights. No, on this light right here, this seventh light, you're going to sit your butt down somewhere. You're not going to be working, kindling the fire, doing none of that stuff. It's going to be a separated day. A what? A Sabbath of rest to what? The Lord. Whosoever doeth work therein shall be put to death. So we see. Transgressing that Sabbath day is punishable by death. The Lord don't play about this day. Do whatever you want on them six lights or them six days. But on this seventh day, uh, -uh that's the Lord's day. Verse three. He tells the children of Israel, ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. Verse four. And Moses spake unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord commanded. All right. Saying, take, take ye from among you 
an offering unto the Lord. Whosoever is of a willing heart, okay, because these are the uh the these are going to be the offerings for the making of this tabernacle. But notice the Lord said he only wanted from Israel, Israelites that's of a willing heart. Because you know he don't want nobody giving grudge. Oh man, I, man, I gotta get his gold, man, for this tabernacle. Lord, like I don't even want that mess. If you're not gonna bring it with a uh, a, a willingly giving heart or a giving mind, don't even bring that mess to me. It says, let him bring it, an offering of the Lord. And those who are going to bring something is those who care about the Lord and care about his dwelling place. It says, gold and silver and brass and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair. And what do you think? I got to say this again. Where do you think Israel got all these materials from, brothers and sisters? Because y'all do realize they're still in the wilderness. They got it from the Egyptians. All of these things the Egyptians um, kept from them. Remember, the children of Israel spoiled and they took everything from the Egyptians. Left they behind destitute. Give me this mess. And it's all there is not gold, silver, brass, blue, purple, scarlet, fine linen, goat's hair and ram skins, dyed red and badger skins and shittimur and oil for the light. And I know this don't really seem that impressive to us today, but you got to understand that all of these items that I'm naming, these were high value commodities back in these times. This stuff was worth a lot. This is stuff the rich folks had. It says an oil for the light and spices for anointing oil and for the sweet incense and onyx stones and stones to be set for the ephod and for the breastplate. And every wise hearted among you shall come and make all that the Lord have commanded. But we know that the whoever um, put all of this stuff together, build this tabernacle, build the ephod. These are people who the Lord touched in the mind, Israelites, that the Lord touched in the mind to make these things. Because even today, you know, men build cell phones, TVs, computers, okay? And they're putting together, you know, getting these little motherboard pieces and putting metal on there and somehow it makes a screen and all of this weird stuff. You see how this stuff made? Like, how do you know this works with this and this is compatible with that and this will cause a screen to appear and do that? You know what I mean? These are people that God put wisdom in their mind to make things, to invent things because the Lord is the creator, the inventor. Okay. Well, let's keep it going. Verse 11, the tabernacle, his tent and his covering boards, his tacks and his boards, his bars, his pillars and his sockets, the ark and the staves thereof. And these are things I believe we covered in Exodus 25 and Exodus 26. Okay. The ark and the staves thereof with the mercy seat, and the veil of the covering, ta the table in his staves and all his vessels and the shoe bread, the candlestick also for the light and his furniture and his lamps with the oil for the light and the all and the incense altar and his staves and the anointing oil and the sweet incense and the hanging for the door of the entering in of the tabernacle. The altar of burnt offering with his brazen gate, his staves and all his vessels, the laver and his foot, the hangings of the court, his pillars and their sockets and the hanging for the door of the court. And I believe all of this was Exodus 30, uh, 27, the pens of the tabernacle and the pens of the court, because remember, uh, the Lord gave Moses the blueprint for all of these things. The only thing now is to get the material for these things. And after that, these materials have to be put together to build 
all of these holy things that the Lord want the children of Israel to make. Verse 19, the clothes of the, the cloths of service to do service in the holy place, the holy garments for Aaron, the priest, and the garments of his sons to minister in the priest's office. Okay, verse 20. And all the congregation of the children of Israel departed from the presence of Moses, and they came, every one whose heart, mind, stirred him up to do what? To give. And every one whom his spirit made willing. And they brought the Lord's offering to the work of the tabernacle. Just that alone should show you that all Israel did not give, but only the ones whose mind was stirred up to give. It says, and they brought the Lord's offering to the work of the tabernacle of the congregation and for all his service and for the holy garments. 22, and they came, both men and women, as many as were willing hearted and brought bracelets and earrings and rings and tablets and jewels of gold. So it show it that just goes to show you how rich Israel became after they took all of that stuff that them Egyptians held back from Israel, spoiled them, took all of these things. Israel was a rich people leaving the land of Egypt. It says in every man that offered an offering of gold unto the Lord, verse 23. And every man with whom was found blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair and red skins of rams and badger skins brought them. Every one that did offer an offering of silver and brass brought the Lord's offering. Every man whom was found shittimut for any work of the service brought it. And all the women that were wise hearted did spin with their hands. Wait, all the women that were wise hearted did spin with their hands and brought that which they had spun, both of blue and of purple and of scarlet and of fine linen. And all the women whose heart stirred them up in wisdom spun goat's hair. 27. And the rulers brought onyx stones and stones to be set for the ephah and for the breastplate, and spice, and oil for the light, and for the anointing oil, and for the sweet incense. The children of Israel brought a willing, off, a willing offering unto the Lord, every man and woman whose heart made them willing to bring for all manner of work which the Lord had commanded to be made by the hand of Moses. All right. Verse 30. Because now uh, these uh, the craftsmen for all of these materials are going to be gathered together. Verse 30. And Moses said unto the children of Israel, See, the Lord hath called by name Bez Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and he hath filled him with the spirit of God in what wisdom in understanding in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. So we see that the Lord pours out his wisdom into a man to be able to invent certain things that we would otherwise think is impossible. Like your cell phone. Look at that. What how did the men know what materials to put together? to create a screen and have this screen project something. Like, how is that possible? You ever think about that kind of stuff? It, it blow your mind. That's how you know this stuff be of the Lord, man. Computers, all of these things, signals. What? How, how does that work? And those are things that let me know that a God does exist. Verse 32. And to, devi and to devise curious works, to work in gold and in silver and in brass and in the cutting of stones to set them and in carvings and in carving of wood to make any manner of cunning work. And he hath put in his heart that he may teach both he and Aholiab, the son of Ahishamek and of the tribe of Dan. Verse 35, last verse of this chapter. 
Them have he filled with his wisdom to, of heart to work all manner of work of the engraver and of the cunning workman and of the embroiderer in blue and in purple and scarlet and in fine linen and of the weaver, even of them that do any work and of those that devise cunning work. Okay, now that ends Exodus chapter 35. Now we are going to read Exodus chapter 36, brothers and sisters, and we will be finished. And I believe we're actually almost done with um the book of Exodus. We got 37, 38, 39, 40. Yeah, so we don't got that much to go. So we basically... After I read Exodus 36, we pretty much got three more chapters and we done. So let's go ahead and finish this up, brothers and sisters. Then wrought Bezalel and Aholiab and every wise hearted man and whom the Lord put wisdom and understanding to know how to work all manner of work for what the service of the sanctuary, according to all that the Lord had commanded. Verse two. And Moses called Bezalel and Aholiab, and every wise-hearted man, in whose heart the Lord had put wisdom, even every one whose heart stirred him up to work unto the work to do it. And they received of Moses all the offering which the children of Israel had brought for the work of the service of the sanctuary, to make it withal. And they brought yet unto him free offerings every morning. And all the wise men that wrought all the work of the sanctuary came every man from his work which they made. And they spake unto Moses, saying, The people bring much more than enough for the service of the work. Okay, so they had all the material that they needed. They didn't need any more than they already had, which the Lord commanded to make. And Moses gave commandment, and they caused it to be proclaimed throughout what the camp, saying, Let neither man nor woman make any more work for the offering of the sanctuary. So the people were restrained from bringing. But it lets you know if they were able to just keep bringing stuff. That lets you know how rich Israel was. Verse 6. I meant verse 7. For the stuff they had was sufficient for all the work to make it and too much. So not only did they have enough to make everything that the Lord told them to make, they had materials left over. So like I said, let you know how wealthy Israel was. Verse eight. And every wise hearted man among them that wrought the work of the tabernacle made 10 curtains of fine twine linen and blue in purple and scarlet with cherubims of cunning work made he them because that's what had to be embroidered on them curtains i believe was on those cherubims verse 9 the length of one curtain was 20 and 8 cubits and the breadth of one curtain 4 cubits the curtains were all of what one size and he coupled the five curtains one to another and the other five curtains he coupled one unto another and he made loops of blue on the edge of one curtain from the self edge in the coupling likewise he made in the uttermost side of another curtain and the uttermost i meant in the coupling of the second 50 loops made he in one curtain and 50 loops made he in the edge of the curtain which is in the coupling of the second the loops held one curtain to another, and he made 50 tacks of gold and coupled the curtains one unto another with the tacks. So it became what? One tabernacle, 14. And he made curtains of goat's hair for the tent over the tabernacle. Eleven curtains he made them. The length of one curtain was 30 cubits. And four cubits was the breadth of one curtain. Eleven curtains were of one size, and he coupled five curtains by themselves and six curtains by themselves. And he made fifty loops upon the uttermost edge of the curtain in the coupling. And fifty loops made he upon the edge of the curtain which coupled the second. 
and he made 50 tacks of brass to couple the tent together that it might be one. And he made a covering for the tent of ram skins dyed red and a covering of badger skins above that. And he made boards for the tabernacle of Shittimu standing up. The length of a board was 10 cubits and the breadth of a board one cubit and a half. One board had two tenons equally distant one from another. Thus did he make for all the boards of the tabernacle. And remember, this isn't the blueprints from Moses and from the children of Israel. These are the blueprints from the Most High's mind. 23. And he made boards for the tabernacle. 20 boards for the south. 20 boards for the south side southward. This is a tongue twister for me. 24. And 40 sockets of silver he made under the 20 boards. Two sockets under one board for his 20 tenons, and two sockets under another board for his two tenons. And for the other side of the tabernacle, which is toward the north corner, made he 20 boards, and there 40 sockets of silver. Two sockets under one board and two sockets under another board. And for the sides of the tabernacle westward, he made six boards. And two boards made he for the corners of the tabernacle in the two sides. And they were coupled beneath and coupled together at the head thereof to one ring. Thus did to both, thus he did both of them in both the corners. And there were eight boards, and their sockets were sixteen sockets of silver, under every board two sockets. And he made bars of shittim wood, five for the five for the boards of the one side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the boards of the other side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the boards of the tabernacle for the side westward for the sides westward verse 33 and he made the middle bar to shoot through the boards from the one end to another 34 and he laid oh, and he overlaid the boards with gold and made their rings of gold to be places for the bars and overlaid the bars with gold and he made a veil of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twined linen with cherubims made he made he it of cunning work. And he made there unto four pillars of Shittimur and overlaid them with gold. Their hooks were of gold and he cast for them four sockets of silver. And he made a hanging for the tabernacle door of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twined linen of needlework and the five pillars of it with their hooks and he overlaid their chapters and their fillets with what gold but their five sockets were of brass now uh let's see mm. let's see uh do i want to keep going we're gonna see Let's go ahead and just, uh, let me see. Do I want to do this? Mm, I'm trying to see if I want to do this or not. You know what? Let's go ahead and read uh, chapter 37, okay? Chapter 37, we're going to be dealing with the construction of the ark. It says in Bezalel, verse 1, Bezalel made the ark of Shittimur. Two cubits and a half was the length of it and a cubit and a half the breadth of it, and a cubit and a half the height of it. And he overlaid it with pure gold within and without, and made a crown of gold to it round about. And he cast for it four rings of gold, and to be set by the four corners of it, even two rings upon the one side of it, and two rings upon the other side of it. And he made staves of shittimu and overlaid them with gold. And he put staves into the rings by the sides of the ark to bear the ark. Because remember, this was a tabernacle. 
and this tabernacle was on the move. So naturally, the things that were within the tabernacle had to also be able to be picked up and moved along with um, this tabernacle. Okay, verse six. And he made the mercy seat of pure gold. Two cubits and a half was the length thereof, and one cubit and a half the breadth thereof. And he made two cherub, cherubims of gold. Beaten out of one piece made he them on the two ends of the mercy seat. And remember, this ark basically was the Lord's throne slash vehicle. Let's make sure we don't ever forget that. Verse 8. One cherub on the end, one cherub on the end, on this side, and another cherub on the other side, on the other end of that side. This king of English be messing me up. Out of the out of the mercy seat made he the cherubims on the two ends thereof, and the cherubim spread out their wings on high, and covered with their wings over the mercy seat, their faces one to another. And remember, this is what Satan was. He was a cherub angel who wanted to be God, okay, and end up being cast down. Even to the mercy seat were, were the faces of the cherubims, okay? So now we're going to be dealing with the construction of the table and the candlestick, and it says, and he made the table of Shittim wood. Two cubits was the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. And he overlaid it with pure gold and made thereunto a crown of gold round about. Also, he made thereunto a border of an hand breadth round about and made a crown of gold for the border thereof round about 13. And he cast forth four rings of gold and put rings upon the four corners that were in the four feet thereof. 14. Over against the border were the rings, the places for the staves to bear the tape. 15. And he made the staves, the staves of Shittimur and overlaid them with gold to bear the table says um now it's crazy because um we see how four rings were put into the four corners of this table so we understand when it comes to the four corners of the table but we act like we don't know what the lord is talking about when he say the four corners of the earth so this whole thing with science about this globe and all of that stuff that stuff is a lot the Lord tells you the four corners of the earth. If you understand what the four corners of a table is, you understand what the four corners of the earth is. And I just had to throw that out there. OK. Verse 16. And it says, and he made the vessels which were upon the table, his dishes and his spoons and his bowls and his covers to cover with all of pure gold and he made the candlestick of pure gold of beaten work made he the candlestick his shaft and his branches his bowls his knops and his flowers were of the same so we see man this tabernacle and the things that was inside it man this wasn't no runchy stuff this wasn't no raggedy stuff like they try to show you in the pit uh-uh this stuff, this was some high-end stuff that was being created. Verse 18. And six branches going out of the sides thereof, three branches of the candlestick out of the one side thereof, and three branches of the candlestick out of the other side thereof. Three bowls made, three bowls made after the fashion of almonds in one branch, a knop and a flower. And three bowls made like almonds in another branch, a knop and a flower. So throughout the six branches, so throughout the six branches going out of the candlestick. Verse 20. And it says, and in the candlestick were four bowls made like almonds, his knops and his flowers, and a knop under two branches of the same. 
and a knot under two two branches of the same. A knot under two branches of the same, according to the six branches going out of it. Their knots and their branches were of the same. All of it was one beaten. All of it was one beaten work of pure gold. And he made the seven lamps and his snuffers and his snuff dishes of what? Pure gold. Of a talent of pure gold made he it and all the vessels thereof. Okay. Now we're going to deal with the construction of the altar of incense. Okay. Verse 21, 25. And he made the altar. And he made the incense altar of shittim wood. The length of it was a cubit, and the breadth of it a cubit. It was four square, and two cubits was the height of it. The horns thereof were of the same. And he overlaid it with pure gold, both the top of it and the sides thereof round about, and the horns of it. Also, he made unto it a crown of gold round about. And he made two rings of gold for it under the crown thereof by the two corners of it upon the sides thereof to be places for the staves to bear it withal. And he made the staves of shittim wood and he overlaid them with gold and he made the holy anointing oil and the pure incense of sweet spices according to the work of the apothecary and brothers and sisters that ends the lesson for today i know i was supposed to read just 35 and 36 but i was like you know what why not throw verse 37 in there so after this y'all we got what 38 39 40 so after that we got just three more chapters and we'll be done brothers and sisters three more chapters and we'll be done so i thank you guys um you know, for sticking with Israel's church through this series of the book of Exodus. Um, I know some stuff may not be exciting, but you know what? It's still the word of God and we have to read it because it's written. So therefore, we need to read it. And I hope you guys got some understanding and I will see you in the next chapter. Shalom.